Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Miss Fuller, and I am the Drama Club Director here at the Central School. I would like to start by saying thank you to everyone for coming this evening and taking time out of your night. Uh, this is our second performance of Annie Jr. Last night was a complete success, and we are hoping that tonight is just the same. A few things we, uh, we have to share with you. One, if you are interested in purchasing a candy gram or a, a flower or rose for your participant, they're in the back. We also have some snacks uh, for sale and some water. And please make sure that you visit the silent auction that is in the hallway. We have some amazing gifts and some uh, donations from the generous people here in Keyport. Uh, at intermission, Mrs. Borelli, at the end of intermission, Mrs. Borelli and Mrs. Diley will be making the announcement of the uh, silent auction winners. So make sure you get out there at the beginning of intermission if you want and try to uh, uh, race up your bid. And uh, they'll announce the winners and, and take care of, you can go see them at the end of intermission. So uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud to say thank you for coming. And we hope you enjoy Annie Jr. Shove the poor kid, you know nothing, dear. She's keeping me awake, ain't she? No, you're keeping us awake. Want to make something out of it? How about I make a panky out of you? Oh, my goodness. Now they're fighting, and I won't get no sleep all night. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Pipe down, all of you. Go back to sleep. <laughs> it's all right, Molly. Annie's here. It was my mom, Annie. We were down on the ferry boat, and she was holding up to all the big ships and then I couldn't find her no more. Lo, it was only a dream. Now you have to get back to sleep. It's after three o'clock in the morning. Annie, read me your note. Again? Please, sir, Molly. Here it comes again. <sighs> Please take good care of our little darling. Her name is Annie. She was born on October 28th. We'll be back to get her soon. We left half of a sable locket around her neck and kept the other half. So that when we come back for her, you'll know that she's our baby. <laughs> now they're, oh my goodness, now they're laughing. All right, do you want to sleep with your teeth inside your mouth or out? <laughs> Gee, I dream about having parents one day, but you're lucky, you really got them. I know, somewhere. Maybe far away. Pouring her coffee, she may be straightening his tie. Maybe in a house, all hidden by a hill. She's sitting playing piano. He's there paying a bill. Bet you there. They correct him like ashtrays and art. Bet you they're good. Why shouldn't they be? Their one mistake was giving up me. So maybe now it's time. And maybe when I wake, they'll be their calling.
so maybe she's made me a closet of clothes maybe they're strict as straight as a line don't really care as long as they're mine so maybe now this prayer's the last one of its kind won't you please come get your baby Now what? Annie, what you doing? Running away. Oh my goodness. My folks are never coming for me. I gotta go find them. Annie, you're crazy. Miss Hangan will catch you. And give you the paddles. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. All right, I'm ready. Wish me luck. Good, good luck, luck, Annie. So long, dog bat. And good luck. I said, get up. Turn around. I said, turn around. There. Now, what do you say? What do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Rotten orphan. I'm not an orphan. My mother and father left a note saying they love me and they were coming back for me. That was 1922. This is 1933. Get up! Now, for this one's shenanigans, you'll all get down on your knobby little knees and clean this dump till it shines at the top of the Chrysler building. But yes. it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> get to work. Yes, Miss Hannigan. Now! Why did a kid want to be an orphan? I'll never know. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Stead of children, we get tricked. Stead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. Got no folks to speak of, so it's the hard knock road we hoe. Cotton blankets, stead of wool, empty bellies, stead of wool. It's a hard knock life. Don't it feel like the wind is always howling? Don't it seem like there's never any lies? Once a day, don't you want to throw the towel in? It's easier to put it up a fight. No one's there when your dreams and night get creepy. No one cares if you grow or if you shrink. Wonder at the when we be. From, From the, the crying, you would think this place would sing. Oh! Empty belly life, rotten smelly life, full of sorrow life, no tomorrow life. Santa Claus we never see. Santa Claus, what's that? Who's he? No one cares for you, a smidge, when you're in an orphanage. It's a hard knock life. Make 
Why not? Nobody's buying them anyway. Gee, thanks, mister. Say, kid, when's the orphan's picnic? <laughs> as soon as I take a bite. <laughs> hey, you see any wild much around here? Uh, no, sir. <gasps> Good. They must be, must be ru running wild over to Aster's place. Well, they're after me too, but don't worry. Everything's gonna be fine for the both of us. Not today. Well, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none well i'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely i just stick out my teeth and grin and say oh the sun will come out tomorrow so you gotta hang on Tomorrow, come what may, tomorrow, <laughs> I love you, <ya. laughs> you're always a day away. 
Hey, you, little girl, come here. Yes, officer? That dog that ate you astray? Astray? Oh, no, sir. He's my dog. Your dog, huh? So what's his name? His name is uh, uh, Sandy. Right, that's it. I call him Sandy because his name's Sandy Color. Okay. Yeah, he's my dog. Okay, let's see a message to his name. Uh, uh, here, Sandy. Here, boy. Sandy. Good Sandy. Good old Sandy. Next time you take him out, see him on a leash with a license, or else he's going to the pound. Yes, sir. I understand. Now get along with you before you catch your death of cold in this weather. Oh, I don't mind the weather. <laughs> When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and say, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. from Coney Island. Yeah. Molly just threw up on it. <laughs> little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn, I can see them. Little girls, little girls, night and day, I eat, sleep, and breathe them. Some women are dripping with diamonds. Some women are dripping with pearls. Lucky me, lucky me, look at what I'm dripping with. Little girls. Someday I'll step on their freckles. Some night I'll straighten their curls. Send a flood, send the flu, anything that you can do to live. It all, girls. <sighs> you did it. Did not. Yes, you did. I'm telling you, I did not. You did. Did not. <laughs> did not. 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 Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Is it? Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant War of the 17th Precinct. We found your runaway. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, where'd you find her, officer? She was in one of them Hoovervilles down by the river with a bunch of bums. They weren't bums. Had, had a magic mutt with her, but he got away. Oh, poor pumpkin. Out in the freezing cold with just that thin sweater. Oh, I hope you didn't catch influenza. Thanks again, officer. On the light of duty, and you, never let me hear that you run away from this nice lady again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, officer. The next time you walk out that door, it'll be 1953. Well, are you glad to be back? Huh? Yes, Miss Hannigan. Liar! What's the one thing I always taught you? Never tell a lie! Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Good afternoon. I'm Grace Farrell, private secretary to Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks, uh, the millionaire? Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays at his home. 
What sort of orphan did he have in mind? Well, she should be friendly. Hi. <laughs> and intelligent. Mississippi, capital M I double S I double S I double P I. Mississippi. <laughs> and cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> up! And how old? Oh, age <laughs> doesn't really matter. Oh, say eight. Or nine. Ten. Eleven. Yes. Eleven would be perfect. And oh, I almost forgot. Mr. Warbucks prefers redheaded children. Hmm. Eleven. A redhead. Sorry, we don't have any orphans like that. What about this child right here? What? What? Nah, not not Annie. You don't want Annie. Annie, would you like to spend the next two weeks at Mr. Warbucks' house? I'd love to. You can have any orphan here, but not Annie. Perhaps. I should call the Board of Orphans and... <laughs> if it's Annie you want, it's Annie you get. It's Annie I want. <laughs> Now, if you'll get her coat, I'll take her along right now. She don't have no coat. Then we'll buy her one. Oh, boy. Come along, Annie. Mr. Warbucks' limousine is right outside. Oh, boy, I can hardly believe it. Good afternoon, Drake. Everyone? Good afternoon, Miss. Has Mr. Warbucks arrived yet? Should be arriving any minute. Do you really live here, or is this a train station? We really live here. Now, would you all come here for a moment, please? Quickly, everyone. <laughs> this is Annie. She'll be with us for Christmas. Annie, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. May I take your coat, Miss? Will I get it back? Of course, dear. Now. What would you like to do first? <gasps> the floors. I'll scrub them. Then I'll get to the windows. Annie, you won't have to do any cleaning. You're our guest. And for the next two weeks, you're going to have a swell time. Now, since you will pick out all your clothes. Green's your best color. No, blue, I think. Your bath is run by Mrs. Green. So, no bubbles, I think. Annette comes in to make your bed. No, no, that's not cheap, is it? I think I'm gonna like it here. When you wake, ring for Drake. Drake will bring your tray. When you're through, Mrs. Pew comes to take it away. Pick up any tool. That's okay, I haven't gotten any anyway. No finger will you lift, my dear. We, we have our one request. Please put us to the test. I know I'm gonna like it here. Used to room in a tomb where I'd sit and freeze. Get me now. mean it. We've never had a little girl. We've never had a little girl. I'm very glad to volunteer. We, we have a one request. Please put us to the test. I know I'm gonna like it
everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome home, Mr. Warbucks. It's good to be home. Not bad, only took 11 hours. Grace, yes sir. Ah! Messages. President Roosevelt wants to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him later. Mr. Warbucks. All right, it's good to see everyone all again. Drake, dismiss the staff. Yes sir. And Grace, if you'll get your notebook. Who is that? This is Annie. The orphan who will be with us for Christmas? That's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphan. <gasps> so I chose a girl. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? Annie what? Oh, I haven't got a last name, Mr. Warbucks, sir. I'm just Annie. I'm sorry I'm not a boy. Not at all. Couldn't be happier. Now, Grace, we'll start with the figures on the iron ore shipments from Toledo to... What are we supposed to do with this child? It is her first night here, sir. Well, I guess we ought to do something special on your first night. Would you like to go to a movie? Oh gosh, Mr. Warbucks, I've never been to one. Then you'll go to the Roxy, then an ice cream store at Rumpel Myers, and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Oh golly. Grace, forget about the dictation for tonight. Instead, you will take Annie to the movies. Yes, sir. R.G. Something the matter, Annie? Just that I thought you were going to take me to the movies. <laughs> Oh no, I'm afraid I'll be far too busy for tonight. Ah, oh, gee. Now, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks, and when a man is running a multi billion dollar corporation. Oh, I understand, Mr. Horba. <laughs> Drake, yes, sir. get their coats. Yes, sir. And Grace, you'll come. Two, of course. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, T. Which car wheel do you want them, sir? The Duesenberg. No, wait. This child has been cooped up in an orphanage. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Why not? It's only 45 blocks. Yes, sir. Ah, smell those bus fumes. There's no air like the air of New York. Come on, you slow pokes. We gotta get to the Roxy before the prices change. <laughs> NYT, the shimmer of Times Square, the pulse, the beat, the drive. NYT, you might say that I'm square, but wow, I come alive. The city's bright as a penny arcade, it blinks. It tilts, it rings. To think that I've lived here all of my life and never seen these things. NYC, the whole world keeps coming. By bus, by train, you can't explain. There yet for Got here this morning. Three bucks, two bags, one me. NYC, I give you fair warning. Up there in lights, I'll be.
popcorn. What do you say to some popcorn? I have that popcorn since given. So fight. Good girl. Good night. Sleep tight. In the end. Why see? Once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove that just because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life need not be over. God, I hope not. Good afternoon, What's the matter? Warbucks fed up with Annie already? On the contrary. This needs to be signed and sent back to the Board of Orphans no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow. What for? Because Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie that he wants to adopt her. Annie. The daughter of a millionaire. The daughter of a billionaire. Would you excuse me for just one moment, please? <laughs> Got any more wonderful news? Uh... Merry Christmas, Miss Hannigan. Oops, pardon me, Blondie. Hi, uh, sis. Long time no see. Rooster? They finally let you out of prison? What were you in for this time? Some old geezer said a swindle them out of 1,100 bucks. Why'd he say that? Cause Rooster swindle him out of 1,100 bucks. Sis, I'd like you to meet friend of mine from Jersey City. Rooster, do me a favor. Get out of here! So who was Blondie bumped into when I came in? Looks like she had a couple of jobs. She works for Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks? The millionaire? Annie, one of the orphans from here, is getting adopted by a... Crummy orphan. Yeah, living in the lap of luxury while the two Hannigan kids ended up on the skids. It ain't fair how he scrounged up the old four box while she gets wool box. The little brat. It ain't fair this here life is driving me nuts while we get peanuts. She's living fat. Maybe she holds the key, that little lady. To get more bikes instead of less. Maybe we fix the game with something shady. Where does that put us? Give you one guess. Yes! yes! Easy Street! Easy Street! And That's where we're gonna be. No, Mr. President, I am not asking for your help. I'm telling you that you've got to do something. All right, we'll talk about it on Friday. 
Friday. Listen, Mr. President, why don't we bury the hatchet and you come over here with Miss Roosevelt for supper Christmas Eve? You will? Gee, thanks, Mr. President. Grace, find out what Democrats eat. <laughs> yes, sir. The package from Tiffany's? Arrived this morning. All right. I'm going to give it to her and then tell her that I want to adopt her. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. Get her down. Yes, sir. Hello. Anne, can we have a man-to-man -man talk? You're sending back to the orphanage, right? Of course not. Annie, I was born into a very poor family, and both of my parents died before I was 10. So, I made a promise to myself. Someday, in one way or another, I was going to be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. But lately, I've realized something. No matter how much money you've got, if you have no one to share your life with, you might as well be broke. I was in Tiffany's yesterday, and I picked this up for you. For me? Gee, thanks, Mr. Warbuck. Oh, gee. It's a silver locket, Tammy. I know it's that old broken one you always wear, so I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Here, we'll just take this old one off and- No! I don't want a new one. Annie, what's wrong? This locket, my mother and dad left it. And a no too. They're coming back for me. I know I'm real lucky being here with you for Christmas, but the one thing I want in the world is to have folks of my own. It'll be all right. I'll find them. Shh. Mr. Wolf will find your mother and father. If he has to pull every political string there is to pull. If he has to put everyone in the job. Up to and including the White House. Annie, give me your locket. But Mr. Warbuck. I understand, but it could be our best clue. We'll have the FBI trace it and find out who bought it. <sighs> okay, maybe they should have my note too. You watch, Annie. You may be meeting your mother and father within a couple of days. Really? Really. Oh boy, I got right a letter to the kids about this. What a thing to occur, finding them losing her. Oh, you won't be an orphan for long. And soon everyone knew I'm looking for my folks, because we're going to go on the radio and tell them, all right? So maybe now it's time, and maybe when I wake, they'll be there calling me back. So maybe now this prayer's the last one of its kind. Won't you please come get your baby?
Good evening, Bert Healy. It is nice to meet you. <laughs> Yes, I'm conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents. Furthermore, I'm offering a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove that they're Annie's parents. Wow! Radio, coast to coast, she's famous. I was, I was on the radio. Me too. Who wants to be on the dumb old radio? <coughs> I do. So for all the Outer Styles family, this is Bert Healy saying, <laughs> Hey, hopeful man, hey, dapper Dan, you both got your style of friends. couldn't do with $50,000. Excuse us, ma'am. Are you the lady that runs the Hill Orphanage? Yeah. Um, what do you want? Was you working here 11 years ago? Yeah. Well, we had terrible troubles back then and had to leave a baby Hugh on the front stoop. Our little girl, our Annie. Your Annie's parents? I can't believe it. Where'd you say you come from again? A little farm up in Canada where, where they got lots of geese, ducks, chickens, and roosters. Cock a doo <sighs> Gotcha, sis. Rooster? I never would have known it was you in a hundred years. Fool the Aggie, and we're going to fool Woolbox too. Get ourselves 50,000 big ones. Sis, we need you help. About details about Annie that might help us pull this thing off. What's in it for me? Three ways split. Half. Half? Half. Okay, 25 grand to eat, but we gotta do it fast. Get the kid, get the money, get out of town. Kid's the problem. What will we do with her afterward? No problem. When I want something to disappear, it disappears. Full good. We get the money, we get the kid, and then we blow this crummy town. And then we'll meet Nietzsche. Where? Oh, yeah! Easy Street, Easy Street, Eddie is the T-S-R-E, S-R-E, S-R-E, yeah, Easy Street, Easy Street, that's where Well, Miss Farrell, 
I'm sorry, Annie. I've spoken to a thousand people claiming to be your parents, but they all were liars and fakes. I was sure somebody was a grandmother and father. Are you certain? Yes, sir. None of them knew about the locket. I'm so sorry, Annie. Drake? Any messages? Sir, it was just coming from FBI. The, the manufacturer of Annie's locket was found in Utica, New York. Oh, boy! Over 90,000 were made and sold. Ah, oh, gee. Annie, I'm afraid that the FBI doesn't think that there's a chance in a million of tracing your parents through the locket. That's okay. I'm sorry. You did your best. Anyway, I guess I can get along without folks. You didn't turn out so bad. Grace? Yes, sir? Do you have those legal papers I gave you the other day? Right here. Annie, I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no. If I can't have my real mother and father, there's no one in the world I'd rather have for a father than you, Mr. Warbucks. Annie, this isn't just going to be an adoption. It's going to be a celebration. And you can have anyone in the world you want to come to it. Who would you like? Well, I guess I'd like Miss Farrell here, and Mrs. Pugh, and Mr. Drake, and well, everybody here. Drake? Yes, sir? Get the staff spipped up. They're going to be the guests at Annie's adoption party. Yes, sir. Ooh, and the kids. They'll be way past their bedtime by now. But I'll tell you what. We'll have everyone over here for a big Christmas party tomorrow. <laughs> Miss Hannigan, too? Why not? Annie, I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I'm the luckiest kid. Together at last. Together forever. We're tying a knot. They never can sever. I don't need sunshine now and turn my skies to blue. I don't need anything but you. Yesterday was plain awful. You can say that again. Yesterday was plain awful. But that's not now. That's then. I'm poor as a mouse. I'm richer than Midas. But nothing on earth could ever divide us. And if tomorrow I'm an apple seller too, I don't need anything, anything, anything. I don't need anything but you. Excuse us, folks. Truly, look, there's our winning. Who are you? Honey, we're your mom and dad. Mudge is the name, Ralph Mudge, and this here's the wife, truly. And you're Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? We loved you, Annie, but we had to leave you behind. We've seen a lot of people who... I'll expect to be running proof of who we are. Here's our driver's license and Annie's birth certificate. Baby girl named Anne Elizabeth Mudge, born to Ralph and Shirley Mudge, New York, New York, October 28th, 1922. October 28th, that's my birthday. Ralph, look, Annie's wearing the locket. When we left Annie at the orphanage, we left half of the silver locket and kept the other half. Yes, it fits perfectly. Thank God, Ralph, she's our Annie. Mr. Mudge, what about the money? Well, we ain't got much, but we'd be glad to give you whatever. You haven't heard that I've offered a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove that they are Annie's parents. No, sir, we don't want no money. On the other hand, Ralph, don't you remember that little pig farm out in New Jersey? With $50,000, we could afford to bring Annie right up into the country. Mr. Mudge, would you mind if Annie stayed here with us until tomorrow morning, Christmas? Then you could come here to pick up Annie and the check. 
for every proposal by any love till tomorrow morning, then you will be spending the rest of your life with us. Oops, pardon me, beautiful. Merry Christmas. Well, this is... Wonderful news. Drake? Yes, sir. Champagne? Yes, sir. We must celebrate because we've just gotten the most wonderful news in the world. Annie has found her mother and father. I propose a toast to Annie Mudge. To Annie, to Annie Mudge. Mudge. Annie! I've lost her. I've lost Annie. Sir, I have the strangest feeling I've seen that Mr. Mudge before. That he's not who he says he is. Then I won't give her up till we're certain. But how? I'll go straight to the top, to the president of the United States, even if he is a Democrat. Merry Christmas, Mr. Warbucks, Miss Farrell. You're up early. You're up early, too. We've been up all night, dear. FBI men coming and going. And Annie, they should know that President Roosevelt is here. Really? Mr. President! Merry Christmas, Annie. Annie, early this morning, FBI Director Hoover telephoned me with some very sad news. He succeeded in tracing the identity of your parents. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Mudge. No, dear. David and Margaret Bennett. But, Annie. Your mother and father passed away a long time ago. You mean I'm an orphan? After all? Are you all right, Annie? Yes, because I know they love me, and they would have come back for me if they weren't. I love you, Annie, Annie And Bennett. I love you too, Mr. Warbucks. Now, who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? Well, the birth certificate could have easily been forged, but nobody else knew about the locket. Except for us and the FBI, of course. And Miss Hannigan. And, and Miss Hannigan. Hannigan. Sir, they're just coming from the FBI. Okay. I'll read it later. The guest from the orphanage. Miss Hannigan, I'm delighted to meet you. Same here, and I know you anywheres. Let me introduce you to everyone. You know my secretary, Miss Farrell, and this is the President of the United States. And this is my butler, Drake. Got it. Mm. 
now it all fits together. Sir, Ralph and, Ralph and Shirley Mark. Well, sorry to bother you on Christmas and all. We just came to pick up Annie. And the check. Oh, yes, the check. Here is, Mr. Mudge, $50,000 certified. Certified, paid for the order of. The jig is up! Yes, the jig is up! Daniel Francis Hannigan, also known as. Brewster Hannigan, also known as Ralph Mudge, also known as Danny the Dip. Lewis, turn them over. Yes, sir. And I believe you'll find that this woman is their accomplice. Whoa! I, I never knew these people till yesterday. Come off it, Aggie. Annie. Annie! Tell them how good and nice I always was to you, huh? Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Hannigan, but remember the one thing you always taught me, never tell a lie. <laughs> Brat! Miss Hannigan is gone for good! Yay! And she won't have to work anymore. Yes, girls, for you and perhaps for all of us, this Christmas is going to be the beginning of a wonderful new life, a new deal. Hey, I rather like that, a new deal. So do I, Franklin, a new deal. <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow lives away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just think of my chin and grin and say, Come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come on then, tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, you're always a day away. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Please. 
put your hands together for our orphans, our star to be, and of course the dog named Sandy, Miley, Reagan, Lucy, Holly, and Penelope. hardest job here, uh, Miss Ava DeSimus. And just one more thing, um, I need to recognize uh, four outstanding people. Um, this is, a, I, I'm the director, but without these uh, three other women, um, I couldn't get very far. Uh, the first one I like to recognize, she's not here tonight, but Miss Kelly Stahl. Yes. Kelly is my costume designer. Every one of these costumes is handmade and hand sewn, including this one. Uh, this is all handmade and hand sewn uh, by Mrs. Stahl. She's amazing. Uh, so a big round of applause for her. I do not sing. I cannot sing. I am not musically inclined in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I'd like to please uh, welcome Miss Sharon Borelli, who comes and helps. Uh, all the parents who continue to get remind uh, messages, and I know I send my emails, and, and this woman does all my running around, and I need this, and can you do that? Uh, she's, she's my go-to for everything kind of person, uh, Miss Nicole Hen. We had a brand new cast. Uh, many of these children sitting in front of you have never taken the stage before last night. Uh, so we can't be prouder. Uh, we just had a little powwow in the back and uh, this morning we, we were on the phone and we can't believe how far they came uh, just from January. 
Um, it, it's incredible, and we're so proud of them. But I did not do this by myself. Um, my hand here and my, my stage manager with me, my stage person is Miss Christine DeSimus. Thank you! And 